Hey everyone, this is For God Girls, the podcast. I'm your host, Jasmine, and this is episode four. Let's jump straight into prayer and then we will get into the episode. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to come back and fellowship virtually with our listeners, Lord God. I just pray right now. I pray that you would use me Use me to uplift, encourage, and inspire someone today, Lord God. I also just thank you for sustaining us all to this moment, Lord God. Day by day, I thank you for your new mercies. Every opportunity to just be with you and be new in you and try to get better every single day. I thank you for that, God. And I thank you for the platform of this podcast and just giving space for us to grow closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So, it's Valentine's week at this point. Valentine's Day is in a few days. So, I wanted to um, do an episode about love. And the more and more I think about it, I guess it's going to be like about self-love. And it's really crazy. I had this big... I think this week I've been on a self-love journey. I've been on a self-love journey for maybe over um, a few, for a few years now, really just focusing on myself and building myself and making sure that I can stand on my own with or without anyone. I mean, obviously we need people, but being okay in my own company, not being dependent on people's company attention or things like that. Just being okay when it's just me and God and I have to lock in with him. Like I'm cool with that. And so this, these past two years have been heavily focused on that. And I didn't even know why I was going through this journey at certain points, but now I do know because even when in the beginning, I still found ways to entertain myself. Even if I was by myself, I took myself out on a lot of dates and I got to know myself very, very well. But after a while, I realized like, okay, I didn't want to go places, so I would just like sit in my room and, what you know, I didn't. Want, I watched all the TV I felt I could watch, so like until that moment, I really had to lock in with God. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start reading my Bible. Or I'm gonna start doing this, and that's what I did. And I'm still growing and getting stronger in that because I'm not perfect. I don't want people to think that. I don't, I don't think that. I'm still learning. I'm still growing, but. The journey has been um, indescribable, I guess I would say. Like, truly, I had, I wouldn't say rock bottom, but like, I just got to a point where I was like, I should pick up my Bible and read it. Like, for real, I should just read this. I should not try to find anything else to distract me. I should just read my Bible. And so that's what I did. That's what I, um, that's how I got to this point. So falling in love with myself and falling in love with God and just seeing the way that he loves me made me change the way that I love myself because I think previously it was, um, you know, how people say self-love and self-care and things like that. But now it's like, it's not just about serving myself. It's about how I let other people access me and the love that they show me or the love they think they're showing me. So one thing I learned throughout this entire journey is that most importantly, God is love. And if someone does not, they don't know God, then they don't know what love is and they cannot love you properly. So for me, that was a very big revelation. And we try to foster relationships with people, I think, and we think we can change people. And we can't. Only You know, you can't change anyone. It literally takes Jesus. It takes God. You can pray for people. You can, you know, lift their name up to the Lord. But you personally can't change anything. It's, it's nothing that you can do that will change someone. Unless they want to change or God puts it on their heart to change. And so I think sometimes we put ourselves in situations where people we know don't know the Lord. And we know that because they don't know, they don't know the Lord, they cannot love us the way that we need to be loved. 
or maybe we don't know the Lord the way we think that we do and we can't love people or we don't know the love that we deserve because we don't know the Lord for who he is. And so I think just in these last couple of weeks, I really have explored what is love? What is God's love? And I really feel like I learned that in the gospels. So when I started reading my Bible all the way through, I want to say I started with Mark, the book of Mark, and then I went to John, Luke, Matthew. That's what I think. I'm not sure. But regardless of that, I think the Gospels is the best way to learn about God's love, Jesus' love for you, and just the ultimate being of a Christian because it just speaks so much about God's love and the ultimate sacrifice and giving his son so that we could be saved because that's how much he wanted to save us and ultimately God's forgiveness and that this forgiveness is a demonstration of his love. And that's what helped me to understand how much God loved me, how much he wanted me to have this salvation, how much he wanted better for me. And I, I, I felt guilty because I was like, dang, like I'm, I didn't see this for myself or that I didn't think that this was possible. But once you learn how much God loves you and it's, it's, it's really like a parental love. I grew up without my biological father in my life for a very long time. And I never felt like, why well, can't, I don't know. I didn't feel like I was missing too much because I have my stepfather who has been my father and I introduced him as my dad so although it was still very different I clearly understood that this was not my biological father and I think I did subconsciously feel like okay well what's up with my real dad you know like I had that thought but also I was okay because I lived a good life like it was nothing I, I don't think I internalized it that deep even though maybe I did my, my therapist may say different but the point I'm making is now that I'm older, I just understand that fatherly love and what that represents and how, you know, they're always like, oh, you have daddy issues and how that can play into your relationships. The same thing is true with not knowing God, because when I learned who God was, it was like having that father there the whole time. Like my dad loves me this much, so I will never let a man, anyone. So I'm saying a man because that's just like the natural comparison but a man a job just anyone in life disrespect me because I know how much God loves me so when people are pushing out hate when they're not showing up in a godly way I'm I'm okay rejecting it because I'm like do you know how much my Lord and Savior loves me do you know how much God loves me my father in heaven loves me so I don't care if you can't show up for me I don't care if you can't do this then you don't deserve to be in my life because I have this and that's the same way with a regular relationship with mother, father, and whatnot. People with two-parent households seem to be more confident because they know that love that they have at home and they grew up with that. But I'm not saying that to like, you know, if you didn't have it, because I didn't have it. But you do have it because you have it in God. And if you have it in God and in your earthly parents, you're doubly blessed because that support that initial love just transcends you it just puts you in a place where you can see what love is you can see this is what it's supposed to be like and so that to me is just such a I don't know that's what helped me understand how much I wanted to love myself because I knew how much God loved me and so it changed what I allowed in my life it changed what I saw for myself what I felt capable of doing and I relate that so much to having a two-parent household and just having that love in your life on earth but as I said you know we don't all grow up that way we don't all see that and maybe you overcome all the odds of not having those things initially and then you find the perfect partner and things like that but how do you change your mindset because it's affected your mindset whether you believe it or not how do you now show up in this space how do you learn what love is
and it's through God. God is love and you cannot have love. You cannot, I'm not going to say you can't have love, but you're, it's hard to show up in the fullest degree of it and have it completely and, you know, give it its highest power without knowing what who God is. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I just been rambling, but I I guess it's better that way. But that's how I feel. Like I I feel like now that I know God and I know God's love and I love myself better, I can love other people better. Like I show up for people better. I'm able to forgive people more. I can do that while still having boundaries, still being able to communicate my boundaries and still I just feel like a more whole person knowing God's love. It's like my past doesn't matter. What I thought I lacked as a child doesn't matter because now I have this understanding of who I am, whose I am and what I'm capable of doing because of that power, because of my legacy in God, because I am God's child. I have so much power. I have so much I'm capable of doing because of who my parent is and I apologize because I feel like (laughs) this is kind of all over the place but in the same sense it's about love and I feel like I'm in love with God I'm in love with what he provides for me and who he has said I am and it's a baseline so I can't accept anything less and I, I when I'm upset or when I don't feel when I'm sinking back into like my earthly ways and I'm like, well, I feel lonely or this, this, that. I can literally write a list of what God wants for me and compare it to what I'm being offered. And if it's not good enough, okay. Then I don't have it here on earth, but I know I have it with God. So that just means I'm going to spend more time with God. I'm going to get it through God. And no, God cannot physically come and give me a hug, but his words are comfort. Spending time in the spirit with him and spending time in his word comforts me and it, it doesn't make me feel lonely because I know what he provides and so that's how I've helped myself and I encourage you to do the same (laughs) Um, if you are in a relationship or you know it everybody has different circumstances but God's love for you should be the baseline and obviously your spouse your mom your dad they cannot compete with God's love obviously however the more they know God, the more they can demonstrate a love like it. And the, and the more you know God, the more you can demonstrate a love like it, which includes forgiveness. So that when the people that you love don't meet the bar, which they won't because they're human, they're not God. But when they don't meet that bar, the God in you can forgive them. And y'all can continue to work to get closer and closer to the bar, which you will never reach. But... <laughs> still it's just like we're constantly striving to be close to God and to be like him and so the only way to do that is to stay in your bible and to know who he is and what he wants for you and his love for you and you your partner your friends your family you all have to be on the same page because you don't want to you don't want to be full of God's love and then the person that you love whether that's your friend your family whatever they don't have it and therefore you you will always be pouring from an empty cup because you're never receiving that level of love back they're not capable of doing it and so that's when you pray for people that's when you push them not I'm gonna say push them but that's when you pray for people and hope that they can get closer to God but you also put your boundaries in place that I can't keep giving to you when you give so little to me you know so <laughs> this episode is quick. It's it's not as tailored as the others, but that's what I have to say. That's what I have to say. Um, God's love is the greatest love, as Whitney Houston say, it's the greatest love of all. And I truly feel like I have nothing if I don't have God. Oh, rest in peace, Whitney Houston. Her birthday's coming. I mean, not her birthday. Her death day is coming up. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> But seriously, um, that's what I think about when I think about love. I think about God's love and what I truly deserve and what I'm not settling. And if that means 
that on earth I'm a little bit lonely and that's just what it has to be for right now because I know what I'm capable of doing because of God's love so I know what I want and I know what I need to replenish the love I'm giving out into the world and so in the meantime in between time it's me and God we locked in and I just encourage you to um for the rest of the month to just concentrate on God's love stop settling for the bare minimum I'm not telling anybody to break up with anybody I'm not telling anybody to leave I'm not telling y'all to quit y'all job I'm not saying any of that but pray for people who you feel could experience God's love deeper pray for yourself find God's love deeper and I do have a scripture for y'all um it is 1 John chapter 4 yes 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 through 12 and it's titled God is love so it says dear friends let us love one another because love comes from God whoever loves is a child of God and knows God Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. And God showed his love for us by sending his only son into the world so that we may have life through him. This is what love is. It is not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the means by which our sins are forgiven. Dear friends, if this is how God loved us, then we should love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in union with us and his love is made perfect in us. So I pray that this week you are able to celebrate love in its purest form. If you don't have a Valentine, make God your Valentine. Spend that day with him. Spend that day pouring love into yourself through his word. It's also Ash Wednesday. So if you can go to church, um, reflect on what Lent is, repent, and just grow your relationship with God because God is love. It's the ultimate, the ultimate love, the greatest love of all. And that's all I have for this week. I love you guys. I do mean it. I truly love you all. And I just pray that you all have a phenomenal week and that you truly get to experience God love, God's love this week. Have a wonderful one.